So we've got about two minutes before the top of the hour. So we'll um, start this right at six. Can I get a name for the phone number 505-551-2665? Hey, it's me at David Grow, G R O W. Thank you, David. Of course. And I apologize, in looking at the email, I think I might have originally been assigned to the earlier group, but so if you want to boot me, I understand. No worries, you're, you're fine. Well, glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, the clock on the wall says it's six o'clock. I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of your day to participate in this focus group. Uh, this is for the Pueblo Canyon Conceptual Trails Plan and Skills Park. Uh, we have engaged um, design office here to work us through looking at um, trails in Pueblo Canyon. Specifically, it's looking at a, a long seven mile trail that would connect from about approximately the Aquatic Center down through the Y at 50, or 502 and 4. Create a couple of uh, NICA loops. Uh, this is a, a National Interscholastic Cycling Association. This is a youth based uh, mountain bike group that um, we have about 50 kids in our community and uh, we have some pretty gnarly mountain bike trails that's a little difficult for them to practice on on occasion so this would be helpful for this group of kids to have um, a training ground in, in their own backyard and potentially have some home meets here as well uh, this is also looking at improving some existing trails within public canyon we're also looking at connecting a, a multimodal trail from approximately the Sanai roundabout across the canyon coming up uh, behind the aquatic center. That's a little more uh, easily traversed. And then there's a um, <clears throat> equestrian trail that we're going to look at um, kind of from the stables down into Bio Canyon. We've got a, a trail there that's a little narrow and provides some um, challenges for those that are either, uh, for most of our equestrians, some of our um, sage equestrians will tell you that it's a little dicey for even them to go up and down. So we wanna to try to improve that as well. Um, this is kind of a morphed conversation that started several years ago with a ride center up at Prito Mountain uh, when the county was considering buying the, the ski mountain. Um, and, that kind of fell through because of the way that fi finally met, wound up. There was a conversation a few years ago about a flow trail that um, kind of ran into to an end spot. So we're, we're trying to pick this back up in, in Pueblo Canyon. This is the focus because it's really the only place um, for some of these opportunities, we think. 
Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Claudia and Patrick um, from Design Office to kind of give you a brief presentation and open this up. So uh, thank you all again for attending. Thanks, Corey. And thanks to everybody for, uh, for jumping on this call and participating in this focus group meeting. I think we had a we had uh, got some great feedback in the the meeting that we had this afternoon. So uh, we look forward to some some candid um, comments and questions um, from from you. I'm going to just give a brief overview. Uh, Corey introduced us to kind of the scope. I'll introduce our team. Um, I'm Claudia, and Patrick Sinat is on the line here uh, or on the call from design office. We're a local landscape architecture and planning firm uh, in Santa Fe, and we've done um, a number of trail projects regionally. We've got Tony Boone trails. Tony Boone um, has over 365 miles of trail construction under his belt and can uh, has worn both the hats of uh, trail contractor um, as well as um, maintenance supervisor and also worked for the city of Boulder just doing trail designs um, and planning. He also has contributed to the IMBA single track um, book that came out on trails. We've got Chinook um, landscape architecture there um, where they were doing some site mapping with drones um, earlier or late last year, just to document existing conditions. And we've got McGill Trails, Jeff Lehman um, has experience working on bike skills parks design as well as construction. So I think our team um, was selected as part of an RFP process um, that the county put out last uh, summer. Um, and our team was selected to uh, look at some of the work and come up with conceptual designs for some of the, the, uh, the projects that Corey identified. And those, I'll just reiterate those briefly. Um, those are a seven mile trail, which is kind of an IMBA green to blue level um, that extends from the aquatic center over to the Y. Um, a bike skills park that is uh, a series of progressive jump lines and drop areas that are green to blue. So this is really meant for, um, for kids and youth and newcomers to the sport um, to have a location where they can get introduced to um, the uh, mountain biking sport and jumps. We are, we've been asked to look at a NICA course. So routes, two or three loops off of a long trail, a staging area and all of that, that meet um, NICA uh, requirements. Um, a connector trail for equestrians from the North Mesa Stables to into Bio Canyon. So our, our work here or our task is to come up with um, the conceptual routes and layouts of these components um, identify what kind of amenities might be needed at uh, trailheads and at these various locations, look at estimated costs, so come up with a cost estimate for these improvements at a master plan level, um, include some maintenance recommendations, both, both short term and long term, because we all know that that is a significant part of trails is not just um, the initial cost, but the long term maintenance, as well as like finally, um, but maybe most importantly, public input so that you get to weigh in on uh, the ideas and the parameters and the, the conceptual designs. So we have already and that's that's what this is part of here. Um, we have already done an initial site analysis. Our team uh, went out there in late November before the, the weather hit to try to document uh, with a drone the existing conditions in Pueblo Canyon. So I'm gonna share a little bit of our analysis that, um, that we put together just from a very rough standpoint 
the seven mile trail, as you all know, um, is going to start near the aquatic center. We would, uh, while the team looked at um, the rim trail for that seven mile, just because of some of the steep grades and conditions, the recommendation is actually that for a blue green trail that we drop pretty quickly into the canyon um, from the aquatic center and use these these, we know we have some locations where it's it's a little dicey, but um, for the most part, we think we can get those better, shallower grades going into the canyon here and connecting up into um, to the Y. Using a combination of um, existing trails and some new ones. The other part of it is the skills park area. So you can see these areas in red here are the zones that we were, this doesn't show the footprint of the skills park. It's just the area that we documented in greater detail, three-dimensionally um, mapping these areas so that we could look at them for designing the conceptual layout of the skills park. So we're looking at both of these locations. Um, and I'm going to just zoom in on that a little bit here. Um, so these are the two locations. This is, I will point out, is, is at a lower elevation than the park behind the aquatic center. Um, and this is something that came in the last, up in the last meeting, is the, the uh, pink uh, polygon here shows the spotted owl habitat. So we're trying to stay away from that habitat. So this is kind of a shallower uh, level area that would be ideally suited for this, this level of skills park. Um, we think there's some opportunities on for the area, the site that's been identified north of Orange Street. So there, there may be some opportunities there as well. Um, but for the most part, we think that the location and the terrain um, by the aquatic centers really best suited to, to this type of skills park for youth. Um, and then for the NICA routes, um, we looked at locations further to the west, but the team really felt that this area closer to the Y was better suited for kind of a staging area for the NICA routes. And um, we could we could look at a loop system off of this, this uh, eastern uh, location. So that's sort of a, a brief overview of um, the takeaways from the site analysis. Um, we are currently, just to give you an overview of the schedule, we're currently uh, doing this kind of focus group input now um, in advance, like while we're still collecting information on existing conditions, our uh, Bike Skills Park sub consultant is planning on coming out early February to look at on the ground to look at the Bike Skills Park area and uh, and come up with some ideas for the conceptual design. We're looking at producing those conceptual designs and coming back and, and holding a public meeting, a full public, public meeting to present the concepts in March with a draft plan prepared uh, with public input incorporated in April. So this meeting is, we really hope that you can sign in first of all, uh, we encourage you to sign in and um, use the chat room to give us your questions and comments. Um, I think we have enough people, last time it worked pretty well to, for, for people just pipe up, unmute yourself. Um, if you have trouble uh, being heard, um, we'll, we'll help with that. If you can use the raise hand symbol um, down in the uh, reactions, that helps us just kind of understand who want, who's ready to speak. Uh, so, that just kind of lays a little bit of the groundwork there. This, this meeting is being recorded and is being transcribed by Los Alamos County. So we'll have a record of this. Um, so with that, I will just open the floor to uh, 
to your comments and questions. So it looks like Brad's got his hand up first. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Claudia, I, first of all, I wanted to get a little bit of background um, because I saw you and your team and I see um, there was, I heard a lot of like, you know, this landscaping company and this landscaping company. Um, how many, I mean, I, I know who Tony Boone is, but who, who else other than in this group have built mountain bike trails before? I mean, who in this group? Other than Tony, other than Tony. So we have. I have. This is Brett Kettering. Oh, in this group. Okay. You mean in our project team? Right, right, in your project. Okay. Team. Yeah, that's yes. what I meant. So, yeah. uh, how many professional mountain bike trail builders? So that is that's largely Tony. He's our he's our consultant for specifically for mountain bike trails. We've done a number of projects uh, with him around the around the Santa Fe area. So um, we're we've teamed together for the last four years on projects. Um, so he's he he's our our main consultant for that. Um, that's great. I guess what because um, my question is uh, regarding. My background was with the flow trail. I was in, integral in that whole project. And what you're, because it seems like the scope of what you guys are talking about is not the scope that was, that project was ever going to be. Um, it was never, it, it kind of got hijacked and turned into a green level trail, which in Los Alamos for a flow trail would, a seven mile green trail would be if not impossible in this terrain, astronomically expensive and frankly would not be what we we're looking for. And the other thing was, I noticed you said something about dropping directly into the bottom of the canyon. Um, if that were so, you know, there's just no way, there's no terrain there, there's just sand. It's that we were hoping to keep, the whole thing was there is a shelf along that canyon wall that we could that we could go all the way around, and we sent a there was a course a study of the trail of the area, and that it looks very doable. Obviously, it would be more blue, strictly blue than green. But have you looked into that? Um, because if we drop straight down into the canyon floor, that that that's just going to be a uh, that's just going to be another cross country trail. Yeah, and I, I guess I should clarify, like straight into the bottom into the bottom of the canyon floor was was not exactly what I was wanting to say because it's we're not looking at a trail on sand. I think we were. There's a lot of existing trails that are are within the canyon. I think what I wanted to say is that our our recommendation is that we're not staying along the rim and then dropping down on the east side, but that we would we would drop into the canyon on the west, closer to the aquatic center and 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 take that route. Okay, because yeah, if we if you start off from the aquatic center there, I, I don't there's just no continuous downhill. And that's why that's kind of why that would have been the easy one, but the only way that we found any possibility where you could have a continuous about a one to two degree um, uh, incline to keep down is staying, at, you know, basically on the edge of the canyon walls, and that was kind of how it was it was being looked at. Um, getting down there, if you get down, if you if you get anywhere near the bottom of that, you're going to end up having to climb out. And I think, Brad, I think it'll probably more be, you know, I'm sort of waving my hands here. I think it'll be clear when we have our next public meeting where we'll actually have lines on the map. And uh, so you can see exactly the trajectory or the proposed alignment that we're, that we're uh, putting forward. I, I guess I would hope that possibly you guys would accept some input from the people who had been involved in really put in some of the work to 
to find because we 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 looked at what you're looking at. It wouldn't work. Um, we you know we did a lot of we had uh there was we've had three different professional trail builders out to look at it. Uh, trail building companies, and so I really if if that's the goal there, it's not going to be what we're what the scope was ever planned to be. So I, I, and I don't mean to start out negative, but as soon as you said that, I, I just went, oh no, we've been, we've gone through this. Okay, thanks, so, Brad. Michael, right. you're next in the queue. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> okay, so um, I live on uh, Walnut Street, right next to the, uh, the Walnut Park, and I hike and down in Pueblo Canyon um, all the time. Uh, so I'm always down in there. Uh, and my chief concern is that the wetlands at the bottom where uh, acid and walnut and Pueblo all come together, that should not be a place where we have bikes racing through there. Um, that is one of the best spots in the whole county uh, for migrating birds. Uh, as of uh, this past spring, there are 154 species of birds that have been recorded there. Uh, that's higher than any other place in the county. Um, there's all kinds of people who go down there uh, to look at birds, especially in May. Um, and then also, of course, the ranch school trail dropping down from the aquatic center, that should not be a place for mountain bikes. Uh, well, I, I don't wanna say no mountain bikes at all, but what I'm saying is that it should not be a place where we promote mountain bikes because that's what spotted owls are. Um, they have been in there at least four out of the seven uh, four out of the past seven years. That is a federally endangered species. Um, so whatever route is uh, proposed, it should not, it should drop into the canyon um, east of where Walnut Canyon comes in. Because uh, beyond that, the habitat kind of peters out and it's your typical ponderosa pine, you know, which is all over the place. So from a wildlife perspective, it's not really that special. Um, the other way to do that would be to drop down into Walnut Canyon, um, maybe on the East Fork Trail, but that as long as it came way downstream to where that crossing is um, on the East Fork Trail, that would be another way to do it. That would also give you, I think, uh, opportunity to have parking up by the golf course because you could drop down from the golf course uh, through whatever that little canyon is. It, some people call it Coyote Canyon, uh, and then into Walnut, and then into Pueblo, and on, you know, and then from there on down. But uh, that area upstream of Walnut Canyon is uh, very important. It has uh, water almost all the year because uh, you have three canyons draining in there. It has uh, willows, um, which is what the birds like to uh, come to. Um, and then, of course, the spotted owls on the ranch school. So. I, as a resident citizen, uh, would definitely prefer to see the bikes come in east of Walnut Canyon. Thank you. Um, Steve and Sue. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Um, uh, just a couple things. I'm sorry, my video is not coming up. Can you can you hear me speak? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Not for some reason. Um, at this end, uh, are these maps going to be made available? They went by so quickly, and we're so small that I'm really not sure what we're talking about here. Are they going to be put up on the county website anywhere that we can access them? Yes. This presentation and those maps will be up probably tomorrow on the county website under the county projects for CSD. Okay. Great. Um, and then I just wanted to echo Michael's concern and broaden it in that the areas that you're talking about all host a tremendous diversity and amount of wildlife. And the terrain parks that I've been to are basically dust bowls. Um, and and the amount, I, I, are there people working with your team or that, that are part of your, um, your, your group that are actually versed in preserving habitat and minimizing disturbance because um, the, the, especially the terrain park looks like it's um, basically going to cause a great deal of habitat disturbance for the, for the wildlife present. Do you have expertise in that? 
we're that's our as a lead we're landscape architects so that is one of our prime, one of our primary goals to make sure to do well it's in fact it's to do projects that are sensitive to the the natural environment and still allow for recreation in a responsible way so that is absolutely our objective and can you tell us will there be with the information that you're providing to the county um presumably you have done these things in other locations i'd, I'd really like to be able to see what those what those look like Do, will there be information about where uh, other projects that you've done that we could take a look at we we can provide that information to Corey so that there's a there's a list not only of what we've done but what some of our teammates have have uh, done in the area. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Jennifer, I believe you're next. Hi, <clears throat> I've uh, hiked in the Pueblo Canyon for four decades now, and I was always under the impression that it was a wildlife area. And I live right next to a trail where bear, deer, coyotes, raccoons, fox, ringtail cats come up through the canyon and I do not wanna see that disturbed. I mean, to have somebody change the natural environment, which is the only reason why I've lived here for all these years, just there's plenty of vacant land around, except for, you know, I don't think that they've changed this from being a wildlife designation area. So I don't know, I don't, I love biking, but I've only seen 12 bikes in there in 40 years that I've been walking through the canyon and carried my grandbabies around in backpacks. And I don't want to see that be torn up. I mean, it's very fragile dirt. It is from, you know, volcanic activity and you can, it's easily disturbed and easily degraded. So that's what I have to say. I don't mind that people enjoy the outdoors, but I don't wanna see something ruined for a handful of people when all ages use the canyon back there. Thank you. Um, Brett, see your hand up. Yeah, um, thanks. So yeah, are we talking about the Pueblo Canyon all the way down to the treatment plant? Or are you talking about the upper Pueblo Canyon to the, to the bridge where by Pueblo, what used to be Pueblo Junior High School back when I was a kid? So it's, it's basically from the aquatic center down to the Y at 502 and four for the long part of the trail. Okay, and so there's already a road that goes through there. The cars drive on. Um, I, you know, I'm not seeing that bikes are gonna be a, more of a disturbance than vehicles are driving through there. Um, it's, a, it's a good place to ride. I've ridden it several times and had no issues. Uh, you can also ride. There's plenty of, of wildlife spotted when you're on a bike out there. I've seen mountain lions and I've seen bobcats and I've seen bear all while riding my bike. Um, so I don't think that's a, a big issue with uh, those those types of disturbances. So it looks like you've already blocked off the area for the skills park that's outside of specifically the spotted owl um, area. And I noted that uh, spotted owls are, are in the near threatened category and it's mainly due to habitat and you can build that skills park without destroying the habitat that is without cutting down the trees. And um, in fact, most of the trees are just falling down by themselves right now. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I think expanding the opportunities here is a good thing for this town. Uh, we need to look at economic diversity in bringing people in uh, to the area and for the residents also to enjoy it. We shouldn't just be locking the gates up and keeping people away. So, thank you. Um, I don't see any other hands up. Anybody else want to? Ah, this is has it got Mary got Mary next. Hi, sorry, I'm called in too because my internet's a little spotty. Um, I just wanted to step in and talk a little bit about sort of the benefit that I've seen. Um, I coach the NICA mountain bike team here in town. 
And um, I've talked with Corey about this, and I have a couple of coaches and parents who've been talking um, about this too. But, you know, Los Alamos is amazing for its nature, its wildlife. And I think most people who live here love getting outdoors and having fun outside. Um, one thing we've seen is that a lot of kids or parents or families want to get out and mountain bike, and they're intimidated. Um, the trails in Los Alamos are pretty challenging. So, you know, looking at giving us the green blue option so that these kids can get out and learn how to mountain bike so families can mountain bike together um, is, I don't know, to me, it's a really important opportunity. And um, I don't know, I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have, but that's sort of my thought. Um, Justin. Yeah, hey, good evening, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, I just want to kind of echo what Mary is saying. Um, we, you know, a, a lot of the trails in the county are very similar. They're they're very challenging, and it, it's hard to get kids out on them. So having a green green blue option would be is a step in the right direction. It, it's something we really need in the county. Um, I'd also like to kind of. Um, support what brad was saying initially you know it would be fun to have a little um more variety for for trails in the in the county um ha having some sort of flow trail or something like that would would be would add an interesting element i know it's a challenging thing to do and it's been talked about a lot um but having that as an option um would still be supported by a lot of people in the in the community i think Oh, thank you. Uh, Jennifer, did you raise your hand back up? No, I didn't, but I do have one more thing to say. <laughs> All right. Okay. I would like to see the county put some money into the infrastructure because instead of in in to change up the beautiful natural environment we have because we have so many potholes in our neighborhood that you can lose your cat in it. So that's where I would like to see some money going instead of like in the canyon where it's already beautiful. And there are like someone had said roads back there that people can drive, ride their bikes through and they don't have to go over bumps and rocks and wear pads and fall into a tree or whatever. But yes. That's how I'm just entering into it. But thank you for the opportunity for me to say that again. You're welcome. Um, Michael, I saw you pop back up. Yeah, um, I was just curious why uh, Bio Canyon was abandoned. Um, I, I remember the flow trail being proposed there. Um, it's a more gentle canyon than Pueblo anyway. It's easier to drop down in there. The walls aren't as steep. Um, and it would empty you down into uh, the Y as well. So I'm just curious why it's only Pueblo Canyon being considered um, and why not Bio, which seems to me the better choice. Um, Bio for a number of reasons was not selected during the last process and has been a no-go with this one. Okay, but why? I, I guess I'm curious why is because the horse people were very vocal uh opposing it um I'll, I'll let somebody that's been here a little bit longer take that one if they want to um brad did you want to share some insight with that yeah uh i have, i have a lot of insight into that one <laughs> we went through a long drawn out battle and yes that is exactly the answer the uh Equestrians fought it with everything they had, and they turned it political. And everybody wanted everybody backed away from it. So we it became very obvious that just wasn't going to happen. Um, I prefer I preferred bio either. It would have been a much easier trail to build, but it's just it's simply not going to happen. Um, Lisa. I got your note. Go ahead. 
Hi. Well, uh, I am one of the equestrians. Actually, I was going to make a different comment, but I will. I will address uh, uh, whoever it was that just asked the last one. Yes, the equestrians did come out. Um, the the folks on North Mesa. Um, that is the only trail we have access to, and um, and we walked it with a lot of a lot of people, including bikers, who understood there were a number of pinch points that would have been very very dangerous. Um, uh, to have both bikers and, and, you know, large numbers of bikers, not just the sort of occasional. So, um, but as, as Corey said, that's pretty much water under the bridge. Bio is not an option. Um, uh, I think that the equestrians and Nancy is on here as well. Um, the, the North Mesa group um, supports the idea of something going into Pueblo. It, while it does impact um, some of our riders that, you know, that do much more, um, long distance kind of riding off the Mesa, it, it might impact them, but not to the extent. Um, so we're in the same boat as the blue green thing. There, there are, there are no easy blue trails off the Mesa for any of us to take our young kids or young horses off um, for the horses. Um, so I would like to, my comment was, you know, a, a small portion of this project is to, um, is to develop a, a more appropriate trail for the horses off the Mesa into bio. And I just wanted to make sure that um, that Claudia and her team um, is aware that there are a number of people out there that would be happy to do a site visit with them. Um, because if you haven't had any experience in doing an equestrian trail or how the horses think or what the riders feel is uh, safety and important to them, it would be really good to have somebody on your initial site visit for that trail. So thank you guys. Um, Mr. Hector, Dave Hector. Yes, thank you. I look at it from the kids' perspective. Uh, I teach and coach at the high school, and a lot of the kids ask me, Coach, um, we'd love to go ride with you, but we don't have uh, some green, blue trails, and um, we feel left out. Um, I know that uh, I moved up here for the mountain bike trails. I love the wildlife, too. Um, I know there are, there are some trails there. Um, you know, we have a lot of options, but I'm looking at it from a kid's perspective and especially with COVID and everything, um, a lot of them feel like they're shut in and that they can't get out and exercise. Um, it's a healthy lifestyle. Anything to do to promote a healthy lifestyle and to help the kids out, I'm all for. Um, so, you know, I'm all, I'm all ears for ideas, um, but I'm looking at it from the kid's perspective um, while also maintaining uh, wildlife habitat. Thank you. Um, Dan Castile. Hi. Um, yeah, can someone just actually describe the actual kind of footprint of the anticipated flow trail on the ground? I don't, and I don't mean exactly where it is, but it's just essentially a trail, right? Like a single or double track trail, not super engineered with, you know, concrete features and things like that. Is it I'm just in and, and the use of existing trails to incorporate in it is can someone just kind of tell me about that I'm just trying to get an idea of the new work and impact that would need to be done so I can take a stab at that um so we've been tasked with a it would be single track so that's a when you put it in any new section it's 24 inches wide max, which usually narrows down, um, sustainable so that it cuts down on maintenance a long term. At this point, it's not part of our scope to really look at any features um, that are mountain bike specific that would give it a designation of flow trail. So that's something that we would have to look at um, and get public input on as we, I think we can, we can maybe have that conversation, uh, at our next public meeting when we've got a proposed alignment and it's something that we'll certainly look at the opportunities to do that for segments of it. Okay. Does that explain? Yeah, I think so. And I mean, there's, it seems to me that there's just a, a lot of trails down there and like Brett said, a road going through it. So is is it all kind of adjacent to that stuff and incorporating some of that existing stuff in there? 100% new. 
incorporating segments of existing trail. Thank you. Um, Steve and Sue, did you re-raise your hand? Yes. Okay, go right ahead. Thank you, this is Steve. Um, I just wanted to give uh, some additional depth on what uh, Michael Smith said. Um, I was one of the biologists that was hired in the mid nineties uh, when the laboratory was uh, forced to stop a project for not considering environmental impact on listed species. And the environmental impact had nothing to do with this habitat destruction, but strictly noise. Um, it stopped the project for many years and cost millions of dollars to take care of that environmental assessment. Um, so that area that Michael was talking about with the confluence of Acid Canyon, Pueblo, and Walnut, um, I think you're gonna have to address um, by law the um, listed species issue. And then the other thing the laboratory didn't have to address is their laws regarding wetlands protections. So um, just a heads up, and I'd be curious to hear how uh, uh, this project is gonna be addressing uh, those environmental, legally environmental uh, enforced um, regulations. That's all, thank you. Um, Justin? Yeah, thanks again. Uh, let's see, I, I was wondering if we could get a few more details on the proposed site for the NICA course. Um, you mentioned staging, but it's not clear what you mean by that exactly. Is that just staging for the race or is there kind of ample room for parking and camping and stuff like that in, in that location? And um, have those things, types of things been considered? So that's part of what we're gonna be looking at and what we'll come back uh, to you with at the next meeting. Um, one of the things that we're doing, like, like we just generally kind of saw that site as having potential for the staging area for parking, potentially camping. Um, our intention is to kind of look at similar footprints of NICA courses in other parts of the country um, and see what kind of footprint they're using um, for a certain number of uh, contestants. So we'll be, we'll kind of be looking to see what can we fit down there, what makes sense, what is acceptable to the adjacent landowners, because it's not all, um, I think the uh, Lanol has some parcels down there. So it's going to be a little bit of um, investigation and, and just, just to see what fits. So we're not quite sure yet at this point if that's, that's, that's going to be playing out over the next month or two. Very good. Thank you. Um, Michael, did you have an additional comment? I see your hand came back up. Oh, no. I'm sorry, that must have been by accident. Okay, Dan, I see you raised your hand, go ahead. Yeah, did I just hear that we're considering parking cars down in the bottom of what I think is Acid Canyon right there below the Aquatic Center for this uh, skills course area? No, the, any parking would be down at the Y at four and 502. Isn't that miles away from where we're talking about? Well, that would be at the end. We're, that's where they're looking at putting the, the, the NICA courses down at that end of the trail system. Okay. We have, we have existing parking that the Aquatic Center could use, and then there's existing parking over near Orange Street that we could use to access the venue up here. Okay. So the NICA course is something different than the Skills Park, I think, which is being considered right below Aquatic. Yes, correct. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So this shows like where my where my cursor is right here, kind of potential location for staging area. And then the trails would use in part existing trails, um, possibly some new ones and um, make use of the, the existing road that's that's in the canyon. Thank you. Anyone else want to share your thoughts, opinions, concerns?
Okay, Mary G. Go ahead. Muted. You're muted, Mary. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So you talked a little bit about schedule, like the focus group coming out through the conceptual design and public input that gets us into April. What's your sort of long term schedule looking at, like, if you know this gets to go ahead, what, you know, are we looking two, three years out to produce the whole project or what's that? plan so the the plan would be as we get through this is we'll have a community priority of the projects and then we we have some funding that's available and we would go to council and ask the park board and council and say do you agree with these priorities and which ones do you want to do so it could probably a year or two if the stars line up um, Brad, I believe you were next. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say, uh, I think it was to Dan, I think he's having a problem uh, understanding where it's going to be. And, and I, I wanted to find out, make sure myself, because I can't have a hard time looking, seeing it from that map. Is it still, I know originally it was planned for like the whole uh, kind of the main trailhead and skills area. Is that the that area that flat area next to kind of like the big the big bridge um, by the old uh, I guess there was an old treatment plant or something like that up there, but it's up on top. Is that still the plan? There, th there's one option there, and then there's one option down in um, the canyon below the aquatic center. There's some some terrain down there that could be inviting. Okay, so either way, it's but both of those have roads running into them now, currently. Correct. So it wouldn't be, it's not like you're, we're, it's not like we'd be having people drive down into the bottom of the canyon. That's not, yeah, that's the plan is to park up top and bike in. Um, Lisa. Okay, so my, I, I did find the raise hand button on my phone. It's hard <laughs> on the tiny screens. Um, my husband, the trail runner, has been behind me listening a little bit, and his questions were, this will be a new trail, and it will be a single use. It will be only for bikers, for mountain bikers, and he's trying to figure out whether, you know, how this will impact the trail runners, the, or, the, or the hikers, for that matter. So this trail is intended to be multi-use, not just for bikers. Yeah, duh. Okay. Um, David, Mr. Grow, I believe you were next. Did I did I unmute myself successfully? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks. So um, I'll echo a lot of the comments here. I think it's great for kids. Um, introducing new kids to, to biking is, is a little challenging here, but I just wanted to add one other thought. I've had a chance to introduce several coworkers to mountain biking and on more than one occasion, you know, there've been injuries involved in their introductory ride. So that's one other advantage to a um, beginner friendly trail. Thanks. Um, Mike Prime. Uh, hi. Mike Prime, I long time mountain biker and hiker out here and down in that canyon quite a bit. And I was on the Los Alamos County Trail Subcommittee for several years. So I have some familiarity with our, our planning and the trails network. And several people have correctly identified that there is a kind of a, a missing element in our trails network, which is a, a more modest level mountain bike trail, uh, which people here are kind of saying green or blue. And that's, I, I, that's close enough to say that. Uh, and the, the flow trail that, that Brad originally helped lead and propose would have would have done that. Uh, for, for this, a lot of this is going to be the doubles from the details. A lot of people here know these areas quite well, and there is some challenging terrain there. So a lot of that is going to be how you actually do it. 
so that's going to be an important part of it for people to support it and see what this actually does. Uh, that canyon is uh, far from pristine. Uh, I think it's a pretty appropriate place to put in some new trails, uh, potentially a skills park, et cetera. Uh, I, I think we should, of course, deal with the wildlife issues, uh, go around those, do we need to do, but that's a pretty good location here to do a, to do a trail like this. And another thing is that I think there's some vision that we're going to build this trail. There's going to be hordes of mountain bikers on this trail all the time. And that just doesn't happen around here. Uh, this trail, it doesn't sound like the level that's going to attract tons of tourists and visitors. Uh, and we'll certainly get some use. But I think fears that it's going to swamp that area with with noise and mountain bikers, uh, it's mostly uh, mostly a little bit not worth worrying about. Uh, now the, the the Scholastic Mountain Bike Trail, I can see that during a meet that would have have a pretty good population, but those tend to be once or twice a year. And that's all I have to add for now. Uh, thank you, um, Justin. Back to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for for listening to what I have to say. I think this will be my last comment. <laughs> um, what I, what I'd like to say to wrap up here is that um, I, I hope this goes somewhere. Um, I was on the original committee that put together the the Ember report. Um, I I was part of the group that tried to get the BMX track rebuilt here in town, and it seems like we get stuck in this endless cycle of just talking about things and there's it never proceeds to action um, and so so i'm wondering what the county is doing to make sure that this goes somewhere is there a process you know with the bmx track there was there has been really no process defined on how we were going to get to the finish line and it's just um completely gone nowhere uh you know, so uh, all of the input that's been um, presented tonight has been really helpful and useful, and I hope that something actually gets done with it. Um, so if you can um, do anything or say anything that might uh, encourage me that, <laughs> or give me some, some bit of optimism that this is going to go somewhere would be helpful or that there's actually going to be some management to this project so that something finally happens um you know for the off-road cycling community and hikers and and everybody who enjoys the outdoors really can benefit from this uh you know so um what do you have to say corey In, anything anything good there we we, we have 400 and gosh i'll have to do math now Four hundred and fifty plus thousand dollars that's waiting to be allocated to a trail project. So again, once we come out of this process with pricing and our priorities, uh, we'll start to make some things happen. Yeah, but but that's never been the problem, right? Um, that money has been in there for a long time. Money has been allocated to other projects, but nothing ever happens beyond talking about it um so i hope something i hope something changes there i hope the county um can clearly define a process on what needs to happen to get from here to, to some sort of finish line that, that's my desire i'm not interested in wasting anybody's time um brett yeah, I just wanted to say thanks for considering a staging in a camping area. I think that's a really nice addition to something like this. Um, as an example, uh, Angel Fire has a small camping area that they um, have near the, the lifts that they use for their downhill mountain biking. And it might be worth talking to somebody there about how they do that. They have a couple of portable bathrooms that they keep nice and clean, which, are very, which is a very nice thing. And uh, there's not an improved campsite. It's it's a boondocking area. So if you brought an RV trailer, for example, they have a 21 foot limit and um, there's no electricity or dump station or anything like that there. But it, there are nice uh, flat locations that you can set up a tent or set up a small RV and, uh, and camp. And I think that's a great addition. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, Claudia or Patrick, we're getting close to our time limit. Is there anything um, that our group of panelists have brought up that you would like to clarify or has sparked another question in your mind that you would like to ask them? Um, I think like the last one, it's nice to see we've got a full spectrum of people with different interests, both from an environmental standpoint and a recreational standpoint, um, equestrians, uh, trail runners, um, off-road bicyclists, people interested in making sure there's beginner, uh, intermediate trails, trails for kids. So it's, it's, it's nice to see that we've got um, people here who are in support of um, the program that we're looking at, uh, trying to come up with a conceptual design for. So I think I think we've heard some some uh, some some good input. I did want to say that for the bike skills park in particular, there uh, we have a survey that we've put together just to dig a little bit deeper into that in terms of what the community would like to see for um, for components of this skills park. So that's something that we can send out to um, the participants here. If you're interested, let us know. Um, also, just if there, if you think of anything else um, outside of this meeting that you would like to share with us, you can certainly um, email Corey or, um, or let us know too, and it can be part of the record. That's um, so no specific questions um, from from my side. I think um, I will maybe be in touch with um, Mary about NICA um, since that's something that you clearly have experience in and we're we're going to be looking at um, and also um, Lisa for the equestrian connection. So appreciate your input. And that's, All right. that's. Okay. All right, Steve, Sue, um, you get the final comment and then I'll wrap this up. Thank you um, for the opportunity to, to end it up. Um, my, my overall plea is please just when going forward with this, do it with as gentle a hand as you can and minimize the disturbance. The three areas that you've, or the two areas you, you've, you've designated for this skills park, um, th there are areas within those that are already considerably disturbed as opposed to areas, no, they're not pristine, but they are more utilized by wildlife, more, uh, more natively vegetated, they're, they're retaining water, they're uh, retaining carbon, they're sensitive areas. And please, if it's at all possible, select those locations that are already disturbed and not um, and and not have to disturb additional areas for any of these projects. It's actually very important to very many people in this town, and you will find that out as this process goes forward. Thank you. Thank you. I want to take uh, thank everyone for taking time out of your evening to to share your thoughts. Again, this is the first in a couple of times where we'll come back and talk about this and get more refined feedback from you. Uh, if you wanna keep up with this, um, this will be on the county's webpage under projects for community services department. Uh, this, this recording as well as the one from earlier today uh, will be there posted probably sometime tomorrow. These are closed captions and we have transcripts as well as the comments from these meetings. Again, uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time, and uh, y'all have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.